to put your tractor into test mode by bypassing all of the safety switches. So on these tractors, you've got a multiple, big long list of them. You got one for the parking brake. You got one for the clutch. Uh, you got one for the deck, whether it's engaged or not. Sometimes you'll have a uh, backup uh, deal that kills the engine if you if you got it engaged, right? And trying to figure out some of those can be a real pain in the rear. Some of them you can just disconnect like this one here. This is just an old tractor that was given to me. The deck was pulled off of it. It's in bad uh, disarray. Um, the motor's like a champ, but uh, I've got to buy a bunch of parts to put this thing back. Well, not a bunch. I mean, it, you know, probably $50 worth of stuff. We'll have this one back cutting again. It's a 22 horse Briggs and Stratton V twin. Oh. Uh, also, this one didn't have the uh, hardware to swivel the hood, so we we built one, and uh, it bolts on and off. The air cleaner was gone, so I used some foam to stick in there just so I can test, but that's not what this video is about. If you're anything like me, man, you struggle with these damn switches uh, trying to figure out, because now they've gotten smart, where one switch will have four wires works both ways so I'm probably making this a lot more confusing than I should be so let me back up this is very very simple whether it's a Briggs Tecumseh Kawasaki it doesn't matter okay you pull this cover off so because we don't know the, the wire codes for or the color codes for all of them you pull this cover off and if it's a single cylinder you look for your coil pack if it's a twin you look for both your coil packs. Both of those coil packs or that one coil pack is going to have a black wire more than likely coming off of it, okay? And coming down to a group of wires like this right here. The Briggs and Stratton has got a gray wire that goes to the carburetor. You gotta have that because it's an electronically controlled carburetor. Oh. Uh, you've got a uh, magneto uh, that comes up here. That charges you got a magneto that goes to the lights and most of them you know and then what they do is they change colors to confuse the hell out of you okay now your solenoid I don't know if you can see that but this is actually a four-point solenoid it's got two big wires two little wires if it's two big wires one little wire okay that means it's got a body ground if it's two big wires two little wires then you've got a positive and you've got a ground the way these solenoids work, when you put power to it, to these little wires, it makes a big switch go like that and makes contact in between these two, just like running a screwdriver across it. So for years I've struggled with these switches, uh, just like many of you, man, and I, I started doing the thing, keep it simple, stupid. I came back to the motor and I looked at these wires coming off the motor and said, you know what, there's only a couple of wires coming off this motor why are we messing with all the wires back here? Because at the end of the day, the thing would die if a switch was set, if a safety switch was set, regardless of whether it was open or closed, right? And what makes this motor die? What makes this motor die is the ground wire going to those coils. Oh. Now, in this case, it's a black wire right here. And what I did was I cut that wire, that black wire, and I added a wire, a speaker wire, you know, you can pull that out of the back seat of your wife's car. She doesn't need four speakers. So you hook one wire here and one wire there, and then you run both those wires up to your dashboard. And look here, put a switch right there. So unfortunately, this isn't a momentary switch. This is a, a uh, on and off, but just a momentary switch will work. So it, you know, it, it makes contact when you push it, okay? So then if you have, um, if you've got the four wire set up on the solenoid, you're gonna have one more step you have to do. If you've got a four wire step, what they do is they break the ground uh, with some of the safety switches. So you need to run a ground wire. See what I did? So there's the, the normal wire coming in and I just tied into that with another wire and I ran it over there to the ground on the battery, okay? So now I've got a ground 100% all of the time. Okay? You only get a ground 
over here if all those switches back in the back are working. So once you do that, when you turn the key on, now I've got power to everything on the tractor. Uh, and put the choke on, and then when I turn this uh, switch here, So to recap, all you have to do, I'm going to make this real, real simple. All you have to do is find the wire coming from the coils. Cut that wire, put a switch in there, okay? If your tractor won't start, then you need to add a ground from the ground side of the battery to the ground side of the solenoid. That's all you need. Now you can test your tractor and figure out what's going on and before you can take it back to factory because this is you know considered unsafe and we don't want you to do anything that's unsafe but at the same time we do want you to be able to work on your tractor without having to take it to the shop hope this helps got any questions uh send us uh send us a note man and we'll we'll be more than glad to help you out P please like and subscribe i hope i didn't make it too confusing by trying to add too much information oh. keep checking back we're doing a ground up re restoration on this uh, 2001 club car, side by side, and we are gonna do a full custom job on it. There's our steampunk scooter that does 50, and we just got through doing this killer old compressor. Be back soon. And his name is John C. <laughs>